The S&P 500 near its lowest in three months. The Nasdaq is at risk of entering a correction and bond yields are near 2007 highs. Stocks are up today, but our guest says we are paying the price now with the stock market sell-off lately for more than a decade of what he calls monetary mismanagement from the Federal Reserve. Marie Leith is Executive VP and Director of Investment Research at Audlum Brown. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Good morning. Before we get into your critique of monetary policy, what has been pushing markets down in the third quarter? Well, I think it's just all these, you know, tremendous interest rate increases are, are sort of catching up with the market. Uh, you know, frankly, what's remarkable is, you know, we've had the highest inflation in 40 years. And alongside that, we've had the central bank slam on the brakes and raise interest rates at, and at the fastest and most aggressive pace uh, in four decades as well. And if I look at, you know, total returns for the U.S. market over the last, uh, since the end of 2021, sort of 2022 and year to date this year, uh, the U.S. market's down about 1%. The Canadian market's down about 2%, including reinvested dividends. I think that's actually pretty good uh, considering uh, how much they've slammed on the brakes. That's interesting. Yeah, the, the pain could have been worse uh, given that the steepest increase in borrowing costs in decades. Absolutely. Tell us, you you are critical of the years of near zero interest rates that we had. Do you think the Fed just just overdid it? Well, absolutely. You know, you 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 want the central bank uh, to step in and get the economy back on its feet after a recession or after a you know some sort of crisis, a pandemic. But once it's back on its feet, um, the extraordinary stimulus is isn't necessary and uh, it, it it fuels um excesses in the in the economy mm -hmm. and for nine of the fifth last 15 years we had zero interest rate policy in the united states and in canada and when you have ultra low interest rates yes it gets the economy going yes it helps get people back to work and that's all good but there's also three major negative unintended consequences number one it it promotes excessive speculation risk taking and debt leverage number two it fuels a misallocation of capital within society and thirdly it, it also um drives uh inequality uh by inflating assets which benefit the rich disproportionately because they're the ones that own all the old assets that are getting inflated. That's interesting. I know we don't really have room to, uh, time to go down there uh, in terms of income inequality, but that, that is an interesting theme. I just wanted to get your t um, take on a couple of individual stocks, if that's okay. Banks yeah. have been out of favor. You think this could be a time to snap up Royal Bank? Well, the valuations are, are cheap on a historic basis. There's no doubt that, uh, you know, that there's a credit cycle in front of us and they're going to struggle to grow their earnings. Um, but the best time to buy the banks when uh, they're discounting trouble ahead. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we think three to five years out and, and you know, we're very confident that that bank and, and some of the other banks are going to be bigger, stronger and more valuable over that time frame. Among the best stocks in uh, blue chip stocks in Canada this year has been Canadian Natural, still up about 19%. Um, Sonovus, my goodness, up, I can't, uh, sorry, this quarter uh, ahead 19%. Uh, Sonovus this quarter up something like 26%. Um, do you, uh, Canadian Natural, you, you reckon is a pretty decent play in energy? Are you not worried that just about everybody who likes oil is already in it? Um, yeah, they, they, you know, they, for most of the year, they weren't very popular. They did amazing last year. They're the, really the only thing driving the market last year. Um, they had a really, you know, they gave back a bunch early on in the year, and, and, and now they're coming back. The stocks are still very cheap, and, you know, from a longer-term perspective, we're, we're not reinvesting in more production. The companies are disciplined. They're buying back stock. They're returning capital to their shareholders, and these are businesses. We own uh, both Canadian Natural and Sonovus. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have free cash flow yields of about 10%. 
That's, uh, yeah, exactly. At, at one time, that would have been considered uh, a screaming bargain. Obviously, there, there has been a shadow uh, over these stocks. Um, a couple of tech names you think are decent looking right now. Apple and Amazon, the, uh, the dynamic duo, you think they're a decent option right now? Well, you know, what we've been telling people, we've owned, uh, you know, a few of the Magnificent Seven stocks for years, mm -hmm. and, and they're fantastic businesses. Uh, they're still reinvesting in their future at high marginal rates of return. Uh, the valuations, though, are, are you know, at the, on the higher side of the historic range, so we like them, we don't love them. Um, you know, so in our model portfolio, we have about a 12% weighting in the Magnificent Seven. That's quite a bit less than the, you know, close to 30% in the S&P 500 index. So we see other, you know, we think it's important to be diversified elsewhere and not have all our eggs in that basket. And Constellation Software in Canada, <clears throat> excuse me, Con Constellation Software in Canada, a reliable blue chip performer over the years. Absolutely, and that's another stock that we've owned for a long time, and uh, it's actually holding up better uh, this quarter uh, than some of the uh, the big tech stocks south of the border. Murray, before we let you go, let me ask you an impossible question. How do you think the final quarter of the year is going to play out? I have no idea, Andrew. <laughs> um, we don't make short-term predictions. We do focus on where companies are going to be three to five years down the road. And, you know, with my comments on, on, on monetary mismanagement, uh, putting the inflation genie back in the bottle means we stop fueling those negative unintended consequences, which to me means the foundation of our economy is going to be bigger down the road. So that makes me more optimistic on where we're going.